Step four, take responsibility. Be disciplined and diligent to earn your autonomy. This is one of life's most precious formulas. Disciplined diligence equals freedom and autonomy. Now that may be slightly redundant, but I like using both disciplined and diligence for a reason. More on that in a moment. Jocko Willink came up with a take on discipline and freedom similar to Jordan Peterson's. Here's Jordan Peterson's first. Virtually every freedom that you have in life, that's true freedom, is purchased at the price of discipline. And he also said, the maximum freedom comes with the adoption of discipline and then also the adoption of responsibility. That frees you up and everyone else around you in the long run. Jocko Willink said, while discipline and freedom seem like they sit on opposite sides of the spectrum, they are actually very connected. Freedom is what everyone wants, to be able to act and live with freedom. But the only way to get to a place of freedom is through discipline. He also said in Discipline Equals Freedom, the field manual, there is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. Let's dig a little deeper into discipline and a word I like even more, diligence. Being disciplined is exercising self-control in your work habits and other behaviors. As we've already covered, it's the precursor to freedom and autonomy. Being diligent is the action of carrying out your work in an orderly, careful, persistent, even relentless manner, in a manner dedicated to excellence, you could say. It's kind of a loaded version of being conscientious, basically. Diligence is the type of work that aligns you with the highest good, keeps you on the straight and narrow, causes you to ascend the hierarchy and embody the logos. There are many great proverbs about diligence, and the Hebrew word we translate into diligence is karutz, which also literally means sharp, like a sharp threshing tool. Uh, also means gold and a trench or moat. You can see some interesting connections there and perhaps why it came to be used to describe diligence. And you can also see a connection between that word and freedom. Because having car roots arms you with a sharp tool or weapon or with a defensive moat or with gold that helps you defend your freedom from, say, freedom leeching starvation, using the sharp edge of the scythe to harvest grain, or from bullies and tyrants using the sharp point of the spear, sword, or arrow to defend yourself. Defend your freedom from foolish decisions that lead to chaos using a sharp mind, or from invaders seeking to conquer, dominate, and enslave using the moat around the castle, or from freedom leeching poverty using gold. And there you have it. Diligence, that beautiful combination of symbols forms a word that represents the foundation of freedom and autonomy. A golden trait that serves as a barrier between you and freedom leeching chaos and a tool or weapon designed to help you take back your autonomy and defend it. Disciplined diligence equals freedom and autonomy. This formula helps you build a truly satisfying life filled with freedom and autonomy and thus fulfillment. But how exactly do you become disciplined and diligent? Well, we could easily spend a series on that and maybe we will, but I'll give you seven steps that I guarantee will make you substantially more disciplined and diligent if you carry them out consistently. Really, even just a month of taking these steps every day is enough to give you substantial real-world results. One, set specific and humble goals. Define your goals clearly. Be specific about what you want to achieve and be humble. That is, apply Jordan Peterson's little things add up strategy that he gives for goals. Start with whatever you have the ability to do. Chances are, it's going to be a very small thing humiliatingly small. You need to break those steps down into small enough increments that you're highly likely to undertake them. 
you know, so for example, th this is a trivial example, maybe you have to do a report on a given topic for school, and you're not very good at that. Well, you know, maybe you could go to the library one day and just check out the library, that might be enough. And then maybe you could go to the library and take out a book. And then maybe you could open the book and look through it. I mean, those would be on different days. And then maybe you could sit down and read the first page of the book. And if you can't do that, then the first paragraph. You know, you have to negotiate with yourself and figure out what the largest step you would take towards your goal is that you would take. And if you don't do it, then you make the step smaller and smaller until you find something that you would do. If you're humble enough, you'll take the first step, which is the most important step. Because of that, chances are you'll take the next step and then the next and then the next and the next and the next. Every single day until months later, you look back and you've become disciplined in a certain area of your life. Step two, write down your big goals into a plan and read it out loud every day. And eventually work your way up to twice a day if you can, once in the morning and once in the evening when your subconscious mind is most impressionable. I like to read certain proverbs and quotes as well. Like the proverb, the soul of the lazy one craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the diligent is made prosperous. Or the Yoruba proverb, hard work is the antidote against poverty. Or poor is one who works with a lazy hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Step three, prioritize your tasks. Break down your plan into reasonable tasks and set deadlines. Focus on the most important tasks first, the 20% of the tasks that are most likely to generate 80% of your results. And prioritize them based on their level of urgency as well as needed. Step four, kill off all distractions. Identify everything that distracts you from your work during the day, then eliminate them. Turn off your phone, computer notifications, children, spouses. If you're serious about building a great life for yourself and for your family, you need to either find or create a quiet workspace or have a no interruption rule. That is, when this door is closed during the day, it stays closed unless there's an emergency. Also, delegate the smaller tasks that distract you from your heaviest hitting tasks as much as you can. Step five, create diligent habits. The most disciplined and diligent people on the planet are disciplined and diligent because, and precisely because, and only because of their habits. Develop good habits that support your work, like setting aside dedicated time for hyper-focused work, taking regular breaks to avoid burnout, getting good sleep at night, working out every day and staying organized, so on and so forth. Step six, tap into your emotion, especially passion and joy. Use every emotion as a fuel. Pay attention to the work that brings you the most joy and fulfillment and find a way to do those things more if possible. And also reward yourself for completing less fulfilling but necessary tasks. Make those things habits. Every so often, tap into the inspiration of others who have achieved similar goals. Step seven, embrace failures as a learning tool. Yes, you should absolutely plan properly and avoid failure as much as you can, but it's literally impossible to never fail. So it's also important to recognize that failure is a normal and absolutely necessary part of the learning process. A failure in your life typically means you are willing to put yourself out there to take a risk and to pursue a big goal or dream and consistently doing that is the exact opposite of true failure. The only true failure is letting fear keep you from your dreams and ambitions. Failure is a harsh but necessary teacher that fine tunes you and sculpts you into a stronger version of you. And that's all I have. If you learned something or were reminded of something important today, please give this video a like and comment to help me harness the YouTube algorithm and subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified when I publish a new one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. 
you the next thing you need to do potentially is to familiarize yourself with a scheduler like Google Calendar so the first thing to do is open it and then maybe to figure out how to put in a task and then a repeating task and it might be a pretty simple one to begin with it's like well why don't you list waking up and specify a time or going to bed and specifying a time an approximate time anyways or put in the schedule when you eat and those are things you do every day and so that's something you're pretty likely to do and so that's a success for you and then well then you can start by putting in something small maybe you need to read maybe you need to exercise maybe you need to uh have a social event with people um maybe you need to watch tv a movie whatever it doesn't matter what it is hopefully it's something you want to do put it in the schedule and you could start by scheduling the things that you would like to do so you can imagine well i like going out to movies i like going to the mall i like hanging around with my friends i like watching tv i like reading a book i like listening to music well then schedule those things and so then you think well I, that means i'm forcing myself to do them it's not that it's that now you're you're allowing yourself time to do them right so the schedule becomes a means of you getting what you want instead of an external jailer who punishes you every time you deviate from requirement so you have to make friends with the schedule and the schedule has to be your friend it should work for you and not against you it's not you're not generating an external tyrant you know you are generating something that you could be um, held to you know and, and that's be responsible to and that's not necessarily a bad thing it can be somewhat burdensome but it's not necessarily a bad thing but generally you should approach it as if this is something that will help you get what you want generating a view of your life that consists of valued goals that you want to attain and then steps by which those might be attained and well then you can ally that with a schedule and then you know not only do you know what you're doing you know that what you're doing is moving you towards something you want and that's rewarding and having your time structured like that and and attaining those goals is pleasurable and anxiety reducing so you know that's a pretty good deal all things considered and you can start stupid and slow like i said just throw some things in that you're pretty high pretty likely to do and fill in the schedule with broad strokes and then as you get familiar with it and comfortable with it and maybe even happy with it you can fill in the details and start to use it in a more sophisticated way almost everyone i know who's accomplished does structure their time explicitly in that manner they've learned to do that over the years you get disciplined across time if you do that and incremental improvement that's sustained is extremely powerful from the perspective of transformation